Hey yo, I'm Christy Rocha, podcast host and content creator, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the Inner Edit. This podcast is all about us, the creators, the storytellers, visionaries, navigating the ever-changing online world. We are in this together, facing challenges unique to our craft, like burnout, setting boundaries, dealing with negativity, and that oh-so-familiar imposter syndrome. Join me as I chat with fellow creators, therapists, and coaches to explore collaborations, making connections, diving into creating conscious content, figuring out how to maximize our content output, and discovering that mindset magic that keeps us going. Whether you're a content creator seeking resources or just curious about the behind the scenes world of digital creators, The Inner Edit is your resource for personal and professional growth in the digital world. We're all going through the same things, so let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button and welcome to The Inner Edit. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Today, I'm joined by Kristen Gingrich, licensed clinical social worker and certified alcohol and drug counselor, author and co-host of Welcome to Group Therapy podcast. Kristen joined the social media world in 2020, which is when I found all of her accounts. She strives to destigmatize mental health and teach that at the end of the day, we are all human. In this episode, Kristen gives us actionable tips on how to get views and followers how to credit audio for your videos, whether or not to expose your family and your content, protecting your security, and more. She really knows her stuff. Let's meet Kristen. Hey, Kristen. So nice to meet you. Thanks for being here with me. Of course. I'm happy to be here. We've already gotten into some good stuff in our pre-interview uh, chatter just about AI and recording and editing clips. And it's just like, it's a lot of bisque, as we say in my mm-hmm. family. Like, mm-hmm. it's a lot of hats to wear as a creator, isn't it? <laughs> so many damn hats. So yeah. many. So okay. many. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I'm like, I never know. Yeah. Um, so many hats. Like, you're your own manager, you're your own creator, you're your own editor. And like some people don't have those. I am all of those. Yes. Um, and it's it's a lot yeah. for sure. I know. All right. So we're gonna get into a lot of what we've kind of already started to discuss, but I want to go back a little bit because I I think I found um your platforms. I wanna say it was like quarantine time maybe Probably. yeah yep. um take me back if when when did you start your platforms how did you start them was there an intention behind it was it a fluke mm-hmm. like go back in time and tell me a little bit about how you got started yeah so i started like an instagram account i believe in like january 2020 okay. and it was called like the main social worker and it was like main as in the state cuz that's where i live mm-hmm. um and i didn't really post on it very often um I was like I had this idea I was like oh let's start this um and then I just didn't and then you know two months later COVID um and I would say that I start that I downloaded TikTok as everyone did and I saw Lindsay Fleming um and I was like oh you you can do this Mm -hmm. and Lindsay I told Lindsay this story and she was like what that she was like my inspiration to start and So I started doing that and it kind of, it took off because, you know, at the beginning of COVID, um, a lot of people were experiencing anxiety and depression and things for the first time in their lives because of this situation um, in quarantine, people losing their jobs, all of this. And so it it kind of took off um, because like we were pulling back the veil on, on therapy, on mental health. We were talking about it in a relatable way. We were letting people know like, oh my God, that's what I'm experiencing Um, and making information more accessible because we also found that, you know, mental health services were now being overrun because again, for the first time in people's lives, they were accessing therapy. They were accessing services. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've interviewed Lindsay. She's just like a, such a joyful Love person. Her. Yeah. Love her. Just, her energy is incredible. And yeah, you could just see her working with kids and just being like a ball of fire, just like oh yeah, person. Yeah. Yes. Um, so seeing this getting started, 
I mean, this is this is a lot of growth in a short amount of time for your accounts. So was were there intentional things that you did like to kind of keep building this or what was the trajectory like of your growth? So I always find that growth on social media is weird because a lot of times you, <laughs> you grow <don't> very <laughs> Yeah. You grow slowly in between viral videos. Yeah. That's really what it is. Okay. The viral videos and the viral content is tends to be what makes you grow the most. But I do grow in between that. I just don't grow that exponential. Like I think I just gained like 15,000 followers on Instagram because I had like three videos within the course of three weeks, like pick off. Wow. And now we're starting to level out. And now right. I get maybe 70 to 80 followers a day or, or things like that but it is it is really weird um especially like as you're growing and you're like okay how do I want to navigate this how do I want to continue my platform and I think for me like I really showed my growth and wanted my growth to come from not from viral videos because Sometimes that doesn't really show. Half my viral videos have nothing to do with mental health. Right. Like it's the dumbest ever that goes <laughs> yeah. viral. It makes yeah. zero sense. Yeah. Um, but what I want, what I what I want the growth to come from is from that relatable um mental health sphere. I want it to come from, you know, as authentic as you can be on social media. That's something that I always talk about is as authentic as you say you are, it's still curated. Um but showing up and and talking about those hard things and talking about the things that are taboo in a way that it's coming from a therapist. Um, it's coming from a therapist showing that she is human and that I, just because I do this as a job, doesn't mean that I am immune to, you know, mental health struggles. I documented my entire TMS treatment. I document my no contact journey. Um, yeah. And I really like, that's how I want my growth to be. Um, is really like, and what keeps people staying because people can follow you from viral videos, but it's what about you keeps you staying. Right. And keeps them watching. Right. Like, yeah, I, absolutely. I think a few years ago when I first got on TikTok, one video had like a hundred thousand views, like whatever it was. And I got all these followers, like 6,000 followers, but in the years, in the time since where are they? Because yeah. my videos get hardly any views and hardly any likes. And then to your point, I don't know if you've heard about the little red truck hauling a Christmas tree guy on TikTok right now, but I found a little red truck on a kitchen mat in my house and posted it. And it has three and a half million views. It this just does, happened like two days ago. It The algorithm. And that's where like, you know, being almost four years into this, um, I have really like changed my viewpoint of content because I remember getting so upset with like, why aren't my videos popping off? Why aren't they? And the reality is, is like, if my video gets like 4,000 views, which is comparative to my following is a very low amount. Right. I just tell myself what I want to speak in a room full of 4,000 people. Absolutely not. Ooh, so why is, so for me that number is still a lot yeah. and I truly just make content I want to make yeah. and so I know what can go viral I I know I could make videos every day that could potentially go viral or get a significant amount but I'm not going to compromise what I want to make and my maybe value system or things like that to make that happen yeah um and instead, I just do what I want and I enjoy what I'm doing um, because this isn't a it is a job in a way, but it's not a job. It's not my sole piece. I have a people are always surprised to hear I have a 40 hour a week job that I work during the week. Wow. And yeah. this is just this is just on the side. Right. Um, but it is it is definitely, you know, the algorithm makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. I have I have tried to figure it out and. <laughs> Yeah. What was the latest one that went? I'm trying to think of like the latest. Oh, I was on a flight to to Florida and I got on this flight and literally we land in Baltimore. I'm expecting to get off this flight. Oh, I saw because, this. Yeah. And 
there the the flight attendant gets on the thing and she goes okay everybody you're going to be getting off blah 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 there is one person on this flight who's going on to fort lauderdale please stay sitting yeah one person yeah you me yeah. <laughs> so i'm sitting like in row like 12 everybody is walking past me like oh are you the one person i'm like just fucking kill me kill me saw please. that one yeah yeah went viral has yeah. nothing to do with my content yeah nothing, but, like what yeah. it has like 3.5 million views or something like 2.5 million views and like 1.2 on instagram i'm like oh my god ah. okay so that's so i have so okay so i have so many questions here um just going off of that that you just said you know three point something on tiktok one point something on instagram like how do you have a process for what goes on tiktok and what goes on instagram or you know what goes on both like how do you decide what goes where so everything goes everywhere for me okay um i am always because i learned on tiktok 90 percent of 99 percent of the time a piece of uh, a video content will start on tiktok first yeah it is a rarity that it starts on instagram first every once in a while i may find a video with a sound and it will end up there but 90 percent of the time it ends up on on um uh tiktok, TikTok first. first yeah there is a delay if you actually look at my content there's about a two month delay in content posting that i'm behind in moving to instagram unless it is a time sensitive so like I did videos for Thanksgiving. So I automatically downloaded them and put them on Instagram. But there is a delay in my posting schedule because my mentality is these are, and people listening, you're getting an inside scoop here. Is that's what we want. <laughs> if I saw, if I was on your page, Christy, and I saw your video, and then I went 20 minutes later and scrolled Instagram and I saw that same video, I'm probably going to scroll past it. Right. Because I've already seen it versus. Yeah. Two months go by, I might have forgotten that I've seen that video. Right. And I might be more inclined to watch it on the other platform. Right. Right. And um, I mean, I then I post I, I call it post and ghost. I post and ghost on YouTube and Facebook. I just put it out there and then I'm like, the I can't engage in this content over yeah. here. I have too much here. Um if I make a static, what we call static posts, so right, those tweets that I post or whatever. Um, those always end up on Instagram first. Um, but nine times out of 10, I make those static posts into a video over on TikTok. And do you say it or do you type it out? On no, I say it. You say I it. I say it. I make it into a video. Yep. Got it. Okay. That okay. Is, that's my hack. That's my life hack is I double dip everywhere I can possibly <laughs> double dip. Love it. Okay. So, um, so two follow-up questions on that. When you're taking something from like I agree with you I think everyone would that things tend to start on TikTok are you then taking let's say you're using a sound from TikTok that someone else made mm -hmm. you make a video to it and then you bring it over to Instagram is it going to say that uh, that sound is now originally yours and it, so like it how do you feel about that is that okay yeah so I I try very hard especially if I know it is a like specific sound that someone made I try very hard to take their username and put it as the sound because a lot of times it will try to credit me right Instagram does this funny thing where it's starting to like credit the problem is is that if someone posts it before the original creator I know yeah it does pull and I and I and I can understand where that's coming from and I can understand how unfair that is I do try if I stitch someone um, I do try to say stitch with and their username if and if it does come up on Instagram great if it if they are not on Instagram or don't have it linked in their TikTok I will just put their TikTok username okay um I try really hard sometimes my ADHD gets the best of me I had something happen the other day where a creator came on to me they're like it'd be nice if you credit me and I was like oh I'm sorry. I thought I did. My yeah. ADHD got the best of me. And I have no problem doing that. Um, I yeah. do try, but if it's like, to be honest, like if it's if it's just like a be boppy do doppy song, I probably don't do it. And I probably should. But if it's yeah. like Taylor Swift's right. You're losing me, like 20 bucks says that gets that gets connected, but um right. but obviously I do that's try, not you. But, <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. and okay. I think that there is also like, you know, 
there is an understanding, or at least I hope that there is, that most audios are not that person. But right. I do understand, like, when you put that time and that work in, um, you want to be credited. Right. And I know that probably somewhere out there, my my audios that I've created are probably credited to someone else. Um, yeah. And yeah. so it is hard. It's definitely, you know, that pooling and piece. Um, sometimes I do try to find the video itself. But again, I'm two months behind in posting and I know that this is a privilege. Sometimes I don't want to scroll two months back in content or yeah. sometimes they didn't even post it on Instagram. Right. No, um, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's just think, my privilege. Yeah. I, I do think that there is um, like this is where it gets gray for me in the sense that I do think there is a general understanding amongst creators that like as long as you're making a consistent effort to credit. Like, okay, you're good. Um, I think that I've come across accounts where on like Instagram, their whole account says original by them. And you're like, mm. <laughs> yeah, but no, you know what I mean? And um, so yeah. I think, I think there is gray area. I think, I think for the um, processes that the apps allow at this time, I think making a wholehearted effort is the best we can do. Yeah. Um, okay. And then the last, the, yeah, go ahead. And I was going to say, and if the reality is if someone calls you out, it's your willingness to then change it. So again, I yes. didn't even, I, I didn't the even humanness. realize because yes. I, and I was like, oh shit. And what did I do? I immediately went to the username, copy the username and change the audio. Right. Right. Because I was okay. like, oh, I didn't realize I didn't change it. And yeah. so I think that that's also the piece is like, if someone does call you out in that way, being willing to just take accountability and be like, oh yeah, I should probably change that. Yeah. Okay. And then in this, this is uh, the last, the last follow up on this specific topic. Um, in the process of the two month delay, then are your videos on Instagram, are they watermarked with TikTok, or have you down you download them and you just know you're going to delay it two months? No, I just, uh, I just scroll back you scroll back so on your so own page. I know on my own page so right now what I've started doing is like bulk liking so my whole process is I actually only like videos that I want to use the audios of interesting it's a whole process it's a whole thing um so I I only like videos that I'm like oh this is inspiration for something or this is an audio that I want to use so I actually probably only have like 300 liked 400 liked videos wow okay interesting yeah and then I unlike them when and that's my toxic <laughs> trait like that's I'm amazing. sorry for anybody listening um <laughs> but I'll scroll back and I'll like like 20 videos of mine in a row so then I just have to go to my likes and then I have them and then I pull from them so and then I unlike them when I when I post it oh interesting and then so then actually but the actual download and transfer to Instagram, at what point is that happening? That at that That's point? happening as I'm posting to Instagram. So like I haven't posted a video today, so I'm going to go into my likes probably after this. Pick one of the saved videos that I have of those 20 that I've liked, download it through the app that I use to remove the watermark and then upload it. Okay. That's what I'm asking. What so app it's removes, really just what uh, app removes I use? the watermark? Uh, Snaptic, I think it's. I use it in. It's online. I use it on yeah. Safari. Got um, because some of them but, are wiggy. That's why I asked. Oh like, yeah, and sometimes it doesn't want to work. Okay. Okay. No, that's good to know. Because I I've used a couple of those, and then like randomly they'll like stop working. And I'm like, ah! yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it just decides it wants to throw a temper tantrum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, posting ninety percent of the time I am posting. If I've down posted something on Instagram, I've downloaded it that day. Um, okay. I think I only have like, I have one draft in my TikTok, in my Instagram. Got it. Okay. Drafts. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. So I want to, um, anything else on that process before I move on? Okay. Um, it's a whole process. That's I know. What that I, sound, is. I, hear, I hear it. It's good though. You I, found what I works admit, for you. I will admit, I pro like when I tell people about like my like how I do that like they look they're like bug-eyed and I was like because some people use their favorites folder um all of that I'm like I 
absolutely my I have people who just save the sound and I'm like how do you do that I need a yeah. visual yeah um yeah. But yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole process. It's so funny when I tell people like my likes are actually only audios yeah. I want to use. That's so, really like, interesting. I'll, I don't like just any video. Yeah, no, that's really, that's really interesting. I, I mostly just appreciate that you've found a system that works for you and actually do it and stick to it. Cause I feel like that's it's the, the hard part. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, um, follow Kira Jones. She's like a TikTok growth coach person and Mm I um she has this whole system I did her course and um to your point she always says if like if you're gonna like save the audio to also save an inspo video and I have found that actually using TikTok on my desktop to do that is so much easier because I just copy the link to an Excel spreadsheet Oh, nice. Okay. And it's like, there's the inspo, there's the sound link, there's everything. And then yeah. I have, the, not Excel, my Google Drive. Gosh, yeah. I just aged myself. Um, And I have that on my phone. So when I'm ready to record, yep. I don't have anything saved actually on the app. It's all in the spreadsheet and I just click and click and go. Um, yeah. So like if I click my hearts, these are all my liked videos. And you'll that. get to a point like, hold on, let me show you. Hold on. So these are all audios that I found, but I'm actually like, here are like three videos of yeah. me because I'm getting down to needing to go back and like videos. But I will say, I sometimes do use the favorites okay. for when I have specific things coming up. So like I have a trip coming up this week. So I have one that's called trip audios. I have a, I have a folder called comebacks. So mm. when I need to do like a nice little salty comeback to a, I love to that. a, to a nasty comment, um, I have like sounds for my orange theory. I have, I save all my collaborations that I do with like other therapists transition. So there are certain times that I do save to my favorites, especially if it's like more of a specific, but I tend to use those. The likes are like general content. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And not just because you have found what works with you. And now I'm seeing also the shift for me is that You know, I think because between Instagram, TikTok, like my first experience with these apps was solely as a consumer. And so I use the apps as a consumer. And what I'm seeing you really do is you are using it as a creator. Like your Mm -hmm. likes, your saves, your everything are all for the sole purpose of how you will create your next thing. And that's a, that's a big shift. I think if, if you're not already doing that, like make it easier yep. on yourself, you know, mm-hmm. revamp it, use the tools that the app does provide to, in your favor. You know? Yeah. Whereas Instagram is different. Yeah. Instagram. I like will. I like willy nilly on okay. Instagram <laughs> because Instagram is not my first step of content creation. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That is not like, like I will more apt to save to my favorites on Instagram because I don't, I don't, I scroll Instagram for consuming. Yeah. Versus I scroll TikTok for consuming, but for yes. more content creating because it is my first stop. Yeah. It's intentional consumption over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes no. I'm like, oh, I'm two hours deep. Uh, I should probably go to bed. I know. I know the thing. You get the, are you scrolling again? <laughs> like every time I'm like, shut up, TikTok. I know. <laughs> shut your damn mouth. No. Um, okay. So I want to go back to something you said now at this point a while ago, but I always think it's worth talking about. You yeah. mentioned that, you know, in, t- in the discussion around, uh, you know, I know what goes viral, but doesn't always go with my value system. I'm not going to change necessarily like what I want to talk about and what I post just for the sake of going viral. This value system around your content, how did you what what is it and like how did you set that up is it something you have written out is it something that you just intuitively know was there a learning curve there about what you will post and not post like (laughs) how did you how did you develop that value system so my value system is personal values laced with the fact that I understand that I am a professional with a professional license and a big girl job um (laughs) that I that could be at risk Okay. Right. I yeah. have to remember that if I'm create my, my account is created 
around being a therapist and being that. So I have to make sure that the content I'm creating is is okay if my clients find it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That the con- that the Im- that the stuff that I'm sharing, I have to be okay with my clients seeing. Okay. Um if they were to find it. I have to be I have to and this is the double standard that I actually just made a video about. I have to be a little bit more aware of how I respond to things in comment section. I am a spicy Scorpio. <laughs> And I don't think that people appreciate how much I control myself in a comment section Mm -hmm. because I can be nasty, but I have to remember that I'm held to a double standard because people think that even in my personal life, I have to be a therapist. Yeah. That I can't tell someone in my comment section to go pound sand (laughs) in a much meaner way because, (laughs) oh my God, you're a therapist. I'm going to call your job. Yeah. I'm going to call your licensing board and put a complaint in on something that I've never even worked with you. Right. It's happened. Mm. And so there is that additional level. But I also like, I also come back to the piece of the world doesn't need to know everything. Like mm-hmm. digital footprints are real. Mm-hmm. And when it's out on the internet, it's out on the internet. It's the reason why I have an issue with a lot of these family accounts. It's the reason why I have an issue with people literally blogging their entire day every day. You are putting, like, I talk about this all the time. You're putting out security question answers. Yep. You're telling people where your kids go to school. Yep. You're telling parents, you're telling people the street you live on and the outline of your house and what your security system looks like. Yep. And so, like, there's also a piece of that that I have to protect my values of safety and security mm-hmm. in that um, to make sure that at the end of the day, everything is okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's it's tricky. I've been having this conversation quite a bit about, you know, whether or not to even show my kids on Mm. social media. I know what you're talking about when you say the family accounts and that's not what I'm talking about. I know the difference. Um, And just for the listeners, uh, to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, the difference is the family accounts who are either A, showing aspects of their children and family that the kids are not consenting to, that there are less than favorable that are going to be out there forever um that are perhaps putting them in a position where they're essentially working and not being compensated for it like these are the things we're talking about versus you know my kind of average life and my kids Mm -hmm. are in the background or I had a video recently where you could just hear my kid's voice and I was like whoa wait a minute I didn't hear that the first time like and it just kind of wigged me out yeah um and mostly because I don't have a cl- clear, strong stance on it. And so mm-hmm. what, and, until I kind of do, I've just erred on the side of not showing them. Um, yeah. I also think for me, I really tr- have to compartmentalize when I'm in like work mode versus kid mode because mm-hmm. they're still kind of, they're still pretty young. Yeah. Um, where Where do you stand on that? I know we've seen a little clips of your personal life. We've seen a yep. little bit of your son, um, but it's not mm-hmm. overwhelming. It's not no, um, um, any, yeah, it's not doesn't seem invasive is what I'm no. and and I always say, like everyone's gonna do what they want to do. I always just say, remember and take inventory of what you're doing. So I do show my will not show my son's face because okay. he's not consenting to that. You will never ever see me show a photo or video of my son melting down I know or or doing that like when I I saw one the other day of like a mom and her kid is sobbing in the car over being put in a car seat and I'm like your first response was to set up your camera and record this yeah and then post it to the internet and it had like two million views and I'm like you have two million views on a video of your child going through a difficult situation yeah um, I will say for me, when I, when, when content of my child ends up online, it is because I 
maybe took three days to film him trying to hug me. Hmm. If I, um, if he ends up on my page, it's because I just took random video clips of us walking. Right. Um, I don't for like, again, there's also that piece of force. Yeah. Hey buddy, do that again. Hey buddy, I need you to do this. Can you sit this way? Um, versus like, again, that authentic piece. Um, I'm never going to be the one to tell people what to do with their kids or Mm -hmm. anything like that. I always say like err on the side of caution and remember that digital footprints are real. So like when your 16 year old gets his first car and you post my 16 year old got a Toyota Tundra in color gold for his first car. Guess what? You just gave the entire world. Yeah. A security question answer. Right. Oh my God, my kid was born in Savannah, Georgia. Right. <laughs> Guess what you just gave them? Their for their birthplace. And and I don't think we realize that. And yeah. even for us as adults, like I think that's important to also like kids aside, like remembering the digital footprint yeah. that you are leaving. And I remember we did a podcast episode and someone asked me, like, um, what was the make and model of your first car? Because they know that it's a hill I die on of like, you'll know I'm not going to give you that because you're not going to get into my bank account. Right. Like, right. but like, we don't, we truly don't realize the dangers of the internet. Yeah. Like, I also um, think we, there's this sort of general sentiment of, well, that'll never happen to me. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. Like, it's like, absolutely. you know, who's going to be trying to get into my bank account? It's like, the point is, is that if someone decides it's yours, they're going to find what they need to find. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of like, I, oh. I, I, yeah, it's just, it's kind of like we lock our doors, but if someone wants to get in your house, they're going to get in your house, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, but we don't, but we don't have to make it easy for them. Right. We don't and have I to give them that the that... blueprint to, you yeah. know, and this, well, like you said, the security system and the key under the mat. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you literally, like, there was a video and I'm like, I, I remember a security company reaching out to me and they're like, we want to gift you a $4,000 security system for your house. And I was like, yeah, let's yeah. go. And they were like, we'll pay for it to be set up. We'll pay for all of this. Like someone, we just want you to make a video about it. And I said, okay, when you're talking about setting it up, are you willing to do a setup for a video and then change it? And they were like, no, we're just going to set it up and we want you to film it. And I said, then no hard right. pass because you want me to make videos to tell people where the security cameras are in my house good for you yeah so unless you're willing to pay for a fake setup right which again let's talk about content creation and things that are fake i know um, like <laughs> know. and what you do to get like and then change it so that i can actually protect my house then maybe we can have a different conversation yeah. um but i was like absolutely not yeah no that's that's it's respectable that you would turn down yeah. the paycheck because you believe oh, in it you know what I mean I would but, love the security system yeah, I've been of course. wanting secure but I'm like I'm not you're trying to tell me you want me to show 450,000 people yeah my secure my home security system right no <laughs> when you say it like that it's like absolutely outrageous <laughs> but but people don't but that's the thing is people don't they don't think that far and it's and it's for a lot it's a lot of like it's not going to happen to me or anything like that and I truly don't think that people realize and I'm not going to say that I'm perfect at it Mm -hmm. because there are probably times where I'm like oh yeah like someone did message me they're like oh my god I think I live on the next street over than you and I was like first of all you should have kept that an inside voice yeah (laughs) that should have stayed inside because now I'm freaked out yeah um but like god you know what I mean? Like yes, if someone who lives oh, locally yes. to me knows that house, right. they're going to know that. And, um, but yeah, no, I, yeah. I don't think we realize the digital footprint that we do leave. And that's yeah. one of the things too, like when it comes to making content, I realize like, am I okay putting this out on the internet? Because sometimes I watch things and I'm like, sir, you put that on the internet I and I don't wild. think that, that was a good, and not even like it's personal information. It's like, sort of, you admitted that online. I know it's wild. It is. Oh, I, I do see some things, even if I'm entertained by it, I'm like, there is the back of the mind thought like, of like, who does this? I'm like, I'm like that's an inside thought. How <laughs> about we put that back in? That's an inside thought. I know, I know, I know. Okay. 
All right. So I want to talk about um, the podcast a little bit too. So I've interviewed Kristen and yeah. I always joke with her that I cannot call her any, anything but Dr. Kristen Casey because that's her handle. And like, that's how I yeah. think of her. Yeah. Um, but anyway, something, and the, the reason why I want to talk about it is not just because it is another form of content, but because something that I hear from creators all the time is how lonely they are, how isolating mm -hmm. it is to be kind of behind a screen all the time. And yes, you have this digital community, but those relationships rarely ever last or become personal yeah. relationships. And you guys, mm -hmm. at least from the outside looking in, I mean, it looks like this, like just incredibly solid group of friends. And I'm curious yeah. How did that start? But at the time that I interviewed her, um, you guys hadn't launched yet. So yeah. I didn't get the full story. We were talking about sleep and all the other things that she does. So yeah. um, how did those relationships start? Did you do anything mm -hmm. in, in particular to nurture them? Like give mm -hmm. the creators out there who are feeling really lonely some advice on how to yeah. cultivate those relationships. I just wanted to make a joke and be like, no, we actually hate each other. Like, <laughs> just can't stand each other. No. Um, Anyone who is... listens to the show would know that you're full of shit right now. <laughs> so. No, it's, and you are right. It can be very lonely um, because in my life, my personal, like my personal life and my creator life don't overlap very often mm -hmm. as far as like my personal friends and my creator friends meet. I remember when a group of creators came to Maine and they walked in my house and it was like this. And they like said hi to my mother-in-law. They met my kid. Yeah. And it was like the weird, I was like, <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. And again, these were people that I trusted, but it can be lonely, especially if you don't have a lot of connections with creators, because I'll be honest, a lot of people in my personal life do not get this. They do not understand. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the podcast specifically was born out of that main trip in a way. Um, so, you know, we we got together with a bunch of creators. We spent a long weekend in Maine. And I remember because Justin sent a message and he was like, FOMO, I'm missing out. What the hell? Mm -hmm. And we ended up FaceTiming him during something. I think it was like our, we did, um, a, those powerpoints oh, and I think yeah I think we facetimed him during that and then it ended up going into like a snapchat group chat okay. and which was chaotic um because Justin's in it and he's the most extrovert and we're like in like K K10 and I are chaos in a different way mm -hmm. and so it was Justin K10 Kristen me and Jess, we were all in this Snapchat group. And one day I said, what if we like came up with a, what if we did a podcast? Hmm. Like that would be so much. And it started like kind of forming from that. And then it kind of turned into what it is, which is welcome to group therapy. And, you know, we see each other every week for an hour and a half. And then every other week we see each other for an hour and a half and then another hour later. Mm -hmm. um, so we're connecting in that way. We have our group chat. Um, but it's, it can be hard to maintain, but yeah. it's also really not because again, like you're maintaining relationships, but you know, we just got together a couple of weeks ago for the first time. Um, I had only met just Justin for like five hours prior to that. I've mm -hmm. seen, um, K10 several times and Jess for the weekend, but like Jess and Justin had never met before. Oh, wow. Um, and so, you know, it's also like, how can I, how can I connect in ways so can I create like a little creator trip like creator trips are always my favorite because yeah. like I love taking trips with like my my personal life friends and doing that but you know they don't want to talk about the algorithm they don't want to talk about the hate comments they don't want to talk about the nuances of being creator because they don't get it right. um and it's not it's not a bad thing like sometimes I wish I didn't get it um <laughs> yeah. but I'm also really lucky and I live in a state where I have some creator friends who live in this state mm. um, and, you know, I connect with them consistently um, yeah. and, and whatnot, but I also like, you know, try to make sure I connect with my personal friends, but it's weird. It's yeah. weird because I'm like, I said, I, I would say to Jess because Jess was like one of my first friends that I made um, on social media. And I remember saying like, if COVID never happened, 
I wonder if we would even be friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because we never would have met. And and maybe maybe the world still would have had us meet, but you know, if it wasn't for COVID, a lot of these people that I know I would have never met. And that makes me feel really sad when I think about it because yeah. I'm like, I like I love these individuals. Uh, they're some of my closest friends. Um, even if we don't see each other often, um, we connect in other ways. Yeah. Yeah. And so true because so many like like how we started the conversation, you know, that that time period showed a need that mm-hmm that especially the the therapists on social media were able to fill and it also I think you know changed a lot of like just having uh, the availability right like you weren't going out to happy hour after work you weren't going to your exercise classes after work it's like you had everybody did everybody had more time to actually create and put stuff out there spend the time in the dm spend the time commenting that you know now at least for me, I have to schedule that time. <laughs> yeah. Whereas before it was like, well, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So is there anything that, I mean, it's, it sounds like you were pretty instrumental in kind of pushing that needle forward as far as like, let's actually do something together. Let's mm-hmm. maybe do a podcast, this or that. But before you were on that trip, this is going to sound like so silly that I'm asking you this, but I, I just know the amount of people that struggle with it. Was it, did these relationships just like literally start as like liking and commenting and DMing and and just like taking the chance that the person on the other side wanted to hear from you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it truly did. Like Jess and I started, we connected because we were both like emo teen, emo kids. Okay. And I remember like, DMing her, like you're an email kid too. Yeah. Um, K10 and I, we became friends because we went on a Las Vegas trip together, and our mutual friend, which is now we're like a little trio, Janelle invited her to come, and we had like started talking, and then we got together, mm-hmm. and like we were like, oh my god, this is great, and now yeah. the three of us are actually leaving tomorrow <laughs> after this. So I don't know when this. Well, I was like, I was like thinking of like timelines on episodes. Oh, like when so this tomorrow, will air. <laughs> yeah. So like December 14th, we we're okay. actually going on a trip together. Oh, fun. Yeah. Cool. And so like us three, um, the same happened with Justin. Um, Justin, you know, we connected on social media and then it just kind of went from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, you know, with time, like sometimes it is just sliding into DMs yeah. and then, and and responding to stories and and things like that but I think it's also important to remember like I have a lot of people that I connect with that are acquaintances and like I respond and I'm casually like whatever but remember that we can't always keep up to date on every single relationship um and that we also have to remember that that comes from other people as well um where like not like I don't get upset if someone doesn't respond to a DM I don't get upset if um you know if someone takes four days because I'm just I have to be in that position because I have to because sometimes I take four days to respond to a message um but yeah sometimes they just grow from comments and DMs and um and just like connecting on things and and again like we had to find that we actually had things in common like I can't go and follow someone and expect us to become friends when literally maybe the only thing that we have in common is the fact that we're therapists. Yeah. And so I think that that's also that piece because I've connected with people um, over the course of these last four years and uh, like we've gotten to talking and whatever. And I'm like, actually, we don't really have anything in common. Yeah. I think too, when we talk about, you know, what what you're showing on social media right does tend to be a very small portion of who we are and I've even come across that myself where I might like really connect 
with what someone's posting on Instagram, say, or or TikTok, say about their motherhood journey or something like that. Mm -hmm. We have kids the same age, but then outside of that, when they start to show other sides, parts of their life, I'm like, yeah, we're not the same at all. You know what I mean? Like it's all the time. Right. It's like, you know what? I really enjoy the stuff that you post about motherhood because we're in the same trenches together. We have kids Mm -hmm. the same age and like we get it and it's funny, but our other interests are like, mm -mm, you know, and I'm not saying I've, I've, I've actually taken the next step of of actually conversing and finding that out. I'm just making the point that yes, when you see someone on social media, you're seeing them in a lane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you have like like I always tell people like there you see if you add up the amount of time of my content in a day, you've probably seen 15 minutes of my day. I know. At max. Yeah, it's wild. Like you you aren't seeing the me snapping at my kid you aren't seeing me doing mundane tasks like you're not seeing the mess that's over here well I mean you I don't, are, I don't even like, see anything that you're saying but, I don't know but what you know what about. I mean <laughs> yes. but you know what I mean yeah, like I do. like yeah. you're not seeing a lot of those mundane activities and so but the problem is is because you think right we go back to parasocial relationship you think you're seeing a lot of my life yeah. then you feel free to make assumptions about that yeah I know I uh, the episode that published today with Chastity Holcomb she we make this whole like point of conversation where she's like I've been friends with people on social media for there are some people I've been friends with for years that I don't know what their legs look like yeah (laughs) that's a little bizarre (laughs) no that's that's what's so funny is like when you meet people and like (laughs) I'm like oh wow you're actually shorter than I expected I know like like, you're super tall like what and that's like one that was actually something that I started asking people like if I was going to meet up with them in public I'm like just tell me how tall you are because like some because sometimes I'm like for some reason you gave off tall girl energy and you're four nine yeah I'm like what um and so like that's like one of those things is like again like I don't even know what some of the some of these individuals that I'm friends with I don't even know what their kids look like right I know yeah like I remember talking to one of my friends who doesn't show her kids at all and I was like we like met up and we had meeting up for lunch several times and I was like can I see photos of your kids you talk about them am I allowed to see this I you could say no yeah and then she was like yeah and I was like oh my god yeah well, for a long cute. time, I didn't even know you had a, a kid. Oh, oh, that's a whole thing. People like people now, they know that I have a kid now, most of the people, but they forget that I'm married because yeah, my husband doesn't. Married yeah. Yeah. My husband doesn't like to be in content. And so like, I remember I did a video with him when we went to Disney and people were like, wait, you have a husband? And I was like, I'm pretty sure this year uh, we've been together for 12 years. Yeah. Like we've. I'm like, yeah. And then I did a video out of him. I'm like, because someone was like, oh my God, you have a husband? And I was like, and I did, did like a funny video, but it, he doesn't like to be posted very mm-hmm. often. And so sometimes I make him be in my content and most of the time I don't. Um, And I just don't talk about him a ton because he doesn't like it. Yeah. Um, And it's so, it's so funny. Again, there are people who were following me for, shoot, they're like, I've literally followed you for a year yeah. and I didn't know you had a husband. And I was like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I been with him for t- been been with him for twelve. Yeah, like he's been there. Um, yeah. and and I think that again, that's the things that we that we miss or that we don't, or if we don't talk about it, people don't know that they exist. Yeah, and so like there is so much that people don't know about me because yeah. I choose not to share it. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that I'm secretive. It's just again that value system. Yeah. But like, because you create relatable content, because you post personal stories, because you post these things, a lot of people, right? We go back to parasocial, feel like they know you. Yeah. Yeah. And and you don't. I know. And, and that's it, not meant to be mean, but. No, right. No, it's just, it's boundaries. Yeah. yeah. In choosing, in what you choose not to share. Mm-hmm. Is that, is it like feel good to you or do you ever feel limited by that? Like, I, I think I'm, I'm wondering, um, mostly like, is it something that you do because it's you in just in your soul, like you believe is the right thing to do, but sometimes like wish you could not, like, I don't know. Do you ever feel limited by what you choose to share and whatnot, even though you still stick with not sharing it? Do you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, no. Um, I would say most of the time, if I'm choosing not to share it, there's a there's a reason behind it, and a lot of times it's protecting my own energy. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. That and and sense. and that's and that's the piece. And again, like it's also, it's also again, there's lots of nuance, mm-hmm. right? I have lightly shared the reasons for going no contact, mm-hmm. but I have not sh- like I've shared pieces of that that I want to share. Mm-hmm. There is so much more to that yeah. that I am not comfortable sharing online because a there are pieces of that 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 are not mine to share. Mm-hmm. Like I remember I did a video one time and I specifically called up my brother and I said, "Hey, I have this I I have this video I want to make. It involves part of your story. Mm. It is I'm focusing on me." But it does require me to disclose a part of your story. And I explained it to him. I said, are you okay with that? Mm-hmm. And he said, can, like, can I think on it? And I said, absolutely. And please do not feel pressured. If you do not want this, you don't have to have it. I yeah. I will guarantee will not post it. And he called me up. He's like, you know what? He goes, fucker. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, share it. And I was like, okay. I was like, and I gave him like a day. I was like, I'm going to give him a day to like, and I sent him the video after I made it and yeah. for him to approve it before I posted. Yeah. But there are things that I don't share because then it gets too personal. And remember that when you share things online, you are opening it up to feedback. Right. Right. Whether you want that feedback or not, like you, like when I put that on a public platform, mm-hmm. that means that I have to in some way be accepting not approving right two different things that there are going to be people who disagree with me and or will tell me like that didn't happen you're being a baby blah 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 like all the time and I have to accept that that's going to be something I come and there are just certain things in my life that I'm not ready for things to be let in like that and protecting myself um and I think that we all have to take inventory of that um and and really kind of navigate what that looks like yeah yeah and i think i think my my whole thing is is encouraging creators to to think about mm-hmm. things like that you know like like you know what if you have to like my like uh, you said earlier you know this is kind of this is your side hustle kind of thing da, 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 but like even if it is a side gig it's still yeah. a gig um yeah and- absolutely I, I just don't, I am encouraging of creators to, to treat it like they would treat a job. Like, do you have a mission yep. statement? Do you have a code of ethics? Do you have, you know what I mean? Because I think until you've thought those things through, there's a chance you're going to learn the hard way <laughs> and you're still going to yeah. learn something the hard way because you're going to miss something because yep. you're human. Oh, absolutely. But like we're absolutely. saying, if, if like we we're saying earlier with the security stuff, it's like, yeah, something's going to happen, but we don't have to give people the keys to the house. You can yeah. establish what you want and and don't want yep. ahead of time. So anyway, Absolutely. okay. So Kristen, is there anything um, based on our conversation that I didn't think to ask you that you wish I would have? Um, anything lingering on your heart, mind, or soul that you want to leave people with, your creators with? That, My? Uh, yeah. The old, and just because like we've done so much talking about is like remember like when you're consuming content think critically a mm-hmm. little bit add a add a little layer of critical thinking to that because i think that sometimes we like i remind people like not everything is going to pertain to you you mm-hmm. don't have to like everything it's easy to scroll past you don't like something and again i'm talking and i'm not talking about things that are racist or harmful or hateful but i'm talking about like if you don't like a video about tacos i know (laughs) scroll past it you don't have to tell that person i don't like tacos just scroll past i know i know it's it's so it's so easy i mean granted like i get one of my favorite and this is like a creator insider thing is like I do certain things in my videos because I know people will comment. Sometimes mm. I will use the wrong your or the wrong there because I know that people will comment about it. Yeah. I will specifically show my tattoos 
because I know that there is a man who's going to comment and be like, why do you do that to your skin? <laughs> and I'm like, well, thank you. I said it. And I did this the other day. I was like, well, it's serving its purpose. And it's like, he's like, what's purpose is that to be repulsive, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no. So men like you who it pisses off will comment and push it further in the algorithm. Yeah. I'm like, good on you. Right. I know. But like, but it's one of those things that like, you know, know the algorithm. The more you engage with content you don't like, the more you're going to see that content. Yeah. So just scroll past. Yeah, I know. That was like that um, <laughs> whole thing you're talking about. It was like there was a, a recipe video that someone did with like a strawberry something or other. And people in the comments are like, well, what if I'm allergic to strawberry? It's like, then oh, this the recipe is the, We did a whole episode on the, we did a whole like side session episode on the what about me effect. And basically that like, they're, like social media is making things like, well, what about me? Well, what about me? Well, what about me? Yeah. And that's, again, not pertaining to things that are racist, hateful, things like that. But again, right. like if you're allergic to strawberries, well, then this is... recipe isn't for you. Right. Like, oh, my God. It was like or like like you've seen the ones where they're like uh, it's I've, the, the recipe ones like just hit it home for me because they're so oh, innocent. Yeah. Right. It's like. There's something this and then, well, what if I am um, dairy free? It's like, well, then don't use this ice cream recipe. Like, I don't know what you like. It's not I'm like, you. I'm like, it's that simple. It's that simple. And granted, like in my head, I'm like, well, engage the algorithm. But I'm also like, it's that simple. I know. Like, I not, know. It's not for you. So, but yeah. yeah. Critical anyway. thinking, a little <laughs> bit of critical thinking. Critical thinking, I love it. All right. Well, thank you so, so much for your time and your insights. I will, of course, link the podcast and your um, social accounts. And, uh, oh, I didn't even ask you about your your journal and your merch. I had that on my list. and like I got, I got so got... many things. Totally. I'll link it all. Um, thank you. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, okay. So the first point I want to draw, draw out here is to say how interesting it is that the millions of followers she's gained are due in part from a couple of viral videos that sometimes have nothing to do with the meat of her content. I think this is such an important thing to say because I know how it feels to be producing content within your niche, feeling like it's not going anywhere, getting super frustrated, and so the, the two points of that are, A, you got to keep going because you never know it's going to hit and go viral. And B, throw in some stuff just for fun every now and then because that might be the thing that goes viral and gets people to your account and then they can see what you're about. Then they can see what you're talking about and the ones that stay are the ones that you wanted there anyway and the ones that don't, that's okay. Let them go. But there's going to be this kind of tug of war with the algorithm that no matter how hard we try, we're never going to fully figure it out. So a random video may gain millions of views more than a video that we deliberately try to gain millions of views. But that random one might, might be the one that brings the people to the one that you are deliberately trying for people to see. I've had this experience recently with my kitchen mat. My kitchen mat went viral. I have nearly 12 million views on this video. And while this is not a video that I have any substance around or care much about, it is bringing people to my page and I'm gaining followers. And you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> anyway, I love Kristen's viewpoint that if her video happens to get 4,000 views, she says, you know, would I want to speak in front of 4,000 people? She doesn't, but that does put in perspective that 4,000 people is actually a lot. So if you're getting 400, 40, 400,000, whatever it is, think about that as actual people in a room. And I think it's going to help change your perspective on the view count. I also think that what matters and is some, that's something Kristen spoke about a lot is being very important to her is staying loyal to her value system. Yes, she knows what goes viral, but she'll never change her value system just for the sake of going viral. Now, using my example, posting about my kitchen mat doesn't go against my values. It happens to be just a random silly thing, but 
it's still within my value system. It, it's still just content. Um, you know, we're talking about changing who you are, changing your beliefs, changing what you're comfortable posting just to go viral. We don't want to do that. Her values come from her personal value system and the knowledge that at the end of the day, she's a professional. She is not putting her day job at risk. Anything that she puts out there, she makes sure it is 100% okay if her clients were to see it. And this also relates to boundaries. We talk a lot about boundaries on this show. And like Kristen said, there's always that slippery slope of what if and how much to show of your kids, your family, your life on social media. But Kristen had great advice to always err on the side of caution It's such a reality check to remember that anything you put out there can actually be harmful in terms of your security. And acting with caution really doesn't limit you because there's a legitimate reason why you're not sharing certain things. It's protecting your energy and, frankly, your safety. You don't need to be giving anyone the keys to your house. And also, just the world doesn't need to know everything. Whatever you're not posting, only you know you're not posting about it. The world doesn't. Kristen really knows how to navigate these platforms like a creator, not just a consumer. And I love the last tip she gave to think critically when consuming content. Meaning, if you don't like it, scroll past it. I cannot agree with this more. It drives me crazy to see comments as I'm scrolling about people that don't like it. It's like, just keep moving. Just keep moving. (laughs) Anyway, Kristen, you are a gem. Thank you for all that you're doing online, all the great work that you are putting out there. We appreciate it. I can't thank you enough for this conversation. All the ways you can find Kristen are going to be linked in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. To learn more about me, my world, all the things going on, head over to ChristyRocha.com. Bye.